Let's give the Lord applause for what he's doing here in this place today. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Well, over the last couple of weeks, we have been talking, we've been doing a series uh, talking about suffering. And uh, again, if this is your first time here with us at Lake Country, welcome. It's like, wow, we had a great service, and then they start talking about suffering. Good day to show up. But can I tell you this? Suffering is part of life, amen? Amen. Now, 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 please hear me. If, if you're sitting here and you're thinking about coming to this Jesus, and maybe you're saying, well, Scott, I want to come to Jesus because I've had too many pains in life. I've had too many sufferings in life, and I don't want pain anymore, so I want to come to Jesus. I'm, I'm tired of suffering, so I, don't want to co- I, so I want to come to Jesus because I don't want to suffer anymore. Please understand, we say this all the time. It's one thing to be in a storm. It's another thing to be in a storm with Jesus. So when we come to Christ, that doesn't mean the elimination of problems. It means the establishment of God inside of your life. And so over the last couple of weeks, we have been talking about suffering. Do you know inside of the, if you use the King James Version Bible, the word suffering appears 145 different times. And so if suffering, there's so many scriptures about suffering in life. It rains on the just and the unjust. And so if there's so much material in the word of God about suffering, then folks, it's going to happen. So we might as well get good at it. We might as well understand what God has to say on the subject matter here today. The very first week that we started this whole series, we talked about going through the storms. There's going to be storms. The divorce, the bankruptcy, the death, the bad doctor's report. There's going to be times of suffering. But God said this, when I take you through. Somebody say through. When I take you through the storms. Then we also realize this, that he will be there for us. And he will be in the storm. Brother reminded me today of this simple truth. No weapon formed against you will prosper. And originally, we thought that was a word for all of our people getting baptized today, but that's a word for this house. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Now, please hear it. It didn't say no weapon wouldn't be formed. It said it won't prosper. And so the very first week, we talked about going through the storm. The second week that we got together, we talked about this. We, 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 We talked about that when you go through a storm, what do you reach out to? When you get the bad report, when you get the laid off, when the divorce papers become final, what do you run to? Do you medicate yourself? Do you run to the food? Do you run to Amazon? What do you run to? Or maybe it's not a what, maybe it's a who. Can I encourage you with this? Before you run to the phone, run to the throne. Because we can run, we, we can, we can run to different people. And there will be times when God will put people in our lives, amen, because that's what we're going to talk about today. And then last week we talked about this, he cares. Yes, there have been some of y'all that in this room, you have been in a season of hurt, a season of suffering. Maybe you're here today and you, you went through that bankruptcy and you're still filling out paperwork. And it just seems like it's been going on so long. Maybe you're here in a broken relationship and you have felt so alone and isolated. Maybe, maybe you've had a country that's been in war and you've prayed and you've cried out and you haven't seen anything take place and you start to wonder, God, do you care? And last week, that's what we spent the whole message on was to say simply this, He cares. He cares. Today, I want to take you. I want to take you to two places inside of the Word of God. So you guys got your Bibles with you today? You got those? Y'all hold them up real quick. Hold them up, hold them up, hold them up. I need to see them. Come on. Good, 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 good. One of the highlights of my morning. Uh, Turn over. I've got two places that I want to take you to today. One, they're both in chapter 5, so that's going to make it a little bit easier. I'm going to take you to Luke chapter 5, and I want you to also turn over to John chapter 5. So Luke chapter 5 and John chapter 5. Let's, let's, start, let's start in John. I'm going to change that. John chapter 5. 
Scripture says in John chapter 5, it says this. It says, sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now, there in Jerusalem, near the Sheep Gate, a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethesda, and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here, a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who was there had been there and an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and he learned that he had been in this condition for such a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me in the pool. When the water is stirred, when I am trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your mat and walk. Verse 9, and at once, at once, at once, the man, at once, the man was cured. He picked up his mat and he walked. We're going to start off here at the pool. We're going to start off here at the pool. See, it, it, we got a man who's an invalid. He's been at this pool for 38 years. He's been invalid for 38 years. Now, why are they at this pool? Bethesda. We're at this pool. And here's why. The waters would be stirred, and people would believe that it was angels stirring the water. And there was a belief that when the angel stirred the water, whoever was the first one to get in would get healed. And so all these invalids were hanging out at the pool, and they were waiting for the stirring of the water. And for 38 years, this man had been there and never been able to get in. Reason why, I mean, he explains it to Jesus, because the reason why, every time the water gets stirred, nobody helps me in. Everybody beats me in. And then all of a sudden, one day, Jesus walks up. Can I tell you something? Jesus has an appointment with you. In the same way that Jesus had an appointment with this invalid, a man who was, let's just say it, he was hopeless. Because for 38 years, he had been invalid, and he had been a beggar, and he had been hanging out at this pool. And Jesus walks up to him, and doesn't he ask an invalid an interesting question? Do you want to be healed? I mean, is that not a crazy question to ask? I remember when Jesus asked a blind man, do you want to see? No, I want to skateboard. No, what, what a weird question to ask. Asking the lame man, do you want to be healed? And then what does the guy do? Instead of going, yes! Oh my goodness, you, yes! What does he do? He gives the excuses. Do you want to be healed? Nah. You see, every time the waters are stirred, Somebody else beats me into the water first. You see, th this, is, this is, when I look at the situation, what this lame man had was he had people around him and nobody would help him out. Nobody would help him into the waters. And so this man would just say, I've grown accustomed to this. It's what I call <laughs> pool boys. <laughs> And when I say a pool boy, I mean simply this. This invalid had to have asked his friends, and maybe the friends were like, no, me first. You see, we live in a world where it's, it's me first. You deserve a break today. You're number one. We live in a world where our attention is number one first. Tell me if I'm missing this, upon ourselves. And could it be that none of those people, none of those pool boys would help them out because it was about them first? Or could it be, could it be, could it be, stay with me. If you're taking notes, could it be that maybe they didn't know. Maybe they didn't know he needed help. Because for some of us in this room, we've got times in our life where we've gone through hurt, we've gone through pain, and you've been upset with family or friends because they didn't come to your assistance. Can I say this just real quick? Could it be that maybe they weren't self-centered? Maybe they didn't know you were hurting? Some of you in this room, I'm just going to say this in love. Some of y'all in this room, you got some fantastic poker faces. 
And you put that mask on and everybody's going, oh, his life's good. How are you, brother? Blessed, highly favored. Well, on the inside, you're hurting, you're rotting away. And so, my friends, there could be some of the times that the pool boys, it's not that they're ignoring you, it's that they don't even know you're in need. Scripture talks about in James, you receive not because you ask not. Could it be that some of us in this room people that love you, family, friends who love you, they haven't come to you in your time of hurt. They haven't come to you in their, your time of suffering because they didn't know what to say. Can I tell you this? My, one of my precious daughter-in-laws not too long ago just went, went through a painful situation. And I didn't have the words to speak. I didn't know what to say. And she interpreted my absence of love and respect and honor. And she, she took my lack of words as a lack of caring. And my friends, I'm just going to tell you, there are people in your life who haven't come to you in your time of need. Could it be, as a pool boy, they didn't come to you because they didn't have the words to speak? I wonder if this lame man at the pool, I wonder if he called out to God. I wonder if at some point this man, being an invalid, said he'd been an invalid for almost 40 years. I wonder if in the beginning he called out to God, but I wonder if over the years he got worn down. Over the years he didn't see any response. He didn't see God moving. He couldn't hear God's voice. He was still invalid. Could it be that he got worn down and over the years he lost hope? He lost hope in God. And could it be that over those years, he finally got to the place that he just went, I guess this is how it's going to be. And can I say this in this room today? There are some of you that is exactly where you are. You prayed for that loved one. You prayed for that business. You prayed for that individual. You prayed for that issue of struggling, that issue of bondage in your life that you wanted to get set free from, and you haven't seen it happening. And somewhere along the way, you started losing hope in God. And can I say this to you today? Don't lose hope. In the same way that Jesus showed up. Can I, can, I, can I just bring out the point in this, this, this story here real quick? It wasn't this man calling out to Jesus, and that's why Jesus showed up. Jesus just showed up. He knew, I've got a son here in need, and maybe God had heard those prayers. If he prayed, God heard them. And when he prayed those prayers... There's so many times that our time is not the exact as God's. And just because God has said not yet does not mean he has said no way. Jesus shows up and he looks at the man and Jesus talks to him. And because here was this man, and, and maybe like you, you've been waiting a hurt, a pain, something you've been praying for. You've been waiting for God. And maybe you've lost hope. And you've been doing this by yourself. You've been carrying the weight by yourself. And I just tell you this today. You're not meant to. You're not meant to carry this alone. You're not meant to carry this alone. Can I show you something really interesting about the cross? Woo! Love the cross. The message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it's the power of God. 
Let me just real quick, can, can I point out something about the cross? Two parts of the cross. First off, you got the vertical. The vertical. This is, this is a picture between man and God. This is us. This is us having this relationship, this intimacy with a living God. And I'm just going to tell you this. One of the beautiful things about suffering is it can push people to God. How many people I have met, when I hear their story, how did you come to Jesus? I was going through this divorce. I was going through this bankruptcy. My, mom, my, my stepmom, my stepmom was raised in a denomination, but she will tell you when she fell in love with Jesus, when she went through living hell here on earth, and it pushed her vertically to God. And you know what she did? She, she found God, and she grabbed hold of God, and she is in love with God. So one of the beautiful things is, is there is that vertical, and that suffering can actually push us to. But I'm just going to go ahead and say this real quick. My desire and Father's desire is that you get this vertical relationship now. Because the storms are going to come. And if you've got that vertical connection, you've got that intimacy, you've got that relationship, when the storms come, you already got them. That's why, that's why the scripture talks about building your life, building your house on a rock. What is that? That's the vertical. Because the storms are going to come. But if you're building your life on the sand, man, that's when we get devastation. But I pray this. I'm praying this. If you're here today, you're watching this today, you don't have a relationship, an intimacy, a following of Jesus Christ, I pray that the next suffering, I'm saying this to you in pure love, please hear me when I say this, I pray it pushes you vertically to him. Scott, are you saying you're praying for suffering? For me? Yeah, check please. I'm, I'm, no. If it gets you to Jesus, then yes, I am. Some of y'all may be sitting here going, well, Scott, I, I, I can't call out to God. I mean, God's got bigger things. Then what? His daughter? His son? He's got bigger things than his sons and his... Can, can I just real quick remind you what the Word of God says in Psalm 68, 19? It says this, the Lord deserves praise. Day after day, he carries our burdens the God who delivers us. Our God is a God who delivers. The Lord, as the sovereign Lord, can rescue us from death. In Psalms, he says this, 55, he says, turn your burdens over to the Lord and he will take care of you. You got to turn it over to him, though. You can't just say, some of us, tell me if I'm missing this, some of us are mad at God right now because he's not answering prayers that we haven't prayed. No, that's a good place to laugh. We get mad at God because we haven't prayed, and God, how come you haven't met my prayer? And he goes, how come you haven't prayed your prayer? I meet needs. And I want you to hear this. God's not forgotten you. He's not forgotten you. He has not dismissed you. In the darkness, in the midst of the storms, in the midst of your pain, you are not alone. Psalm 139, 7 and 8 says this, Where shall I go from your spirit, or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to the heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. So this lame man, this lame man, he had Jesus walk up to him. And he didn't, he didn't recognize Jesus. He, he was so in a hopeless state that he didn't even recognize God. Listen, listen. There are some of us in this room right now that we are at such a hopeless place that when you stand in front of that sunset, you don't give God applause. You don't even recognize his handiwork. For some of us in this room, you come into a church service and the presence of God is dropping and maybe your heart is just dull and it's numb. And this man who was so distant in his heart and mind to God, didn't even recognize Jesus. 
He didn't recognize God when he walked up. Jesus looked at him and he asked that question. And of course, the man comes back with the different responses. And he says, man, these people won't help me into the pool. These are pool boys. But see, there's another part of the cross. There's another part of the cross that I want you to see. Yes, we've got the vertical, which is that relationship, that intimacy with God. But there's also the crossbar. And when we talk about the crossbar, I'll turn over real quick now, over to Luke chapter 5. And this is when we see not only the relationship. Hear me. We're not supposed to be doing suffering on our own. One, there's the vertical. We need that connection with God. And some of y'all may say, well, Scott, I've gone through suffering without God. Okay? I can also push a car from point A to point B, but that's not what it's designed to work. So there's not only the vertical bar, but my friends, there's also the horizontal. In Luke chapter 5, I'm just going to give you this story real quick for sake of time. You got another man. You got another invalid. You got another man who's in need. Luke 5 and John 5. You got another man who's in need. And this guy, though, he's got different friends. These guys, in fact, if you know the story, what takes place is that the invalid has these friends and they have them on a stretcher. And these friends are going to take this man to Jesus. And so they go to the house where Jesus is teaching. But guys, understand at this point of Jesus' ministry, he is rock star status. That house is packed with all of these people going, he's real, he's real. In fact, the house is not just packed. The outside of the house is surrounded by people. And so you know what these guys do? They take their friend, the invalid, on the stretcher. They take him to the roof. They dig a hole in the roof of the house. They lower their invalid friend down through the roof in front of Jesus. And Jesus walks over to him and says, your sins are forgiven. Rise and walk. Woo! Come on, baby. That's a good story. But now we're not going to talk about pool boys. We're going to talk about roofers. <laughs> so today we got pool boys and roofers. Now, pool boys are going to be the guys going, if I even recognize that you have a problem, I'm concerned about me first. Roofers are the guys going, you got a need. Now, listen, hear me. There's never going to be a time in any of our lives where all of us have everything figured out and all of us have just sunshine and rainbows and unicorn. No, we're all going to go through it. But hear me, we need to be a people that aren't just looking at ourselves. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ, who being in very nature God, do not consider equality with God as somebody who grasps, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant. He considered others. Better than himself. And that's roofers. Let me give you a couple points just real quick, and we're going to be done here today. If you're taking notes, there's a couple things I want you to see about roofers. These kind of friends. First off, roofers realize the man is in need. They realized it. They, they, they got their paralytic friend. It's kind of obvious. He's paralytic. And he, they've got a friend, and this guy is in need. He was dependent upon begging. He was in suffering. We all, we all have seasons of our life where we go through suffering. You go through that divorce. You go through the bankruptcy. You go, whatever it is. We all have our different needs. Okay, well, these guys recognize that. Well, the truth is, is that we're in need of God continually. Some of y'all may be saying, well, Scott, oh, hey, I'm, I'm good today. I, no needs, no suffering. You and I are continually in need of God. Growing up as a little kid in that Baptist church, open your hymnals, page 162. I need thee every hour, O oh, gracious God. 
when I hear people say, Scott, I come to church because the church is like a filling station to me. I go, no, 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 no. You come to Jesus because Jesus is like an IV. We need Christ every hour. You may be going, I'm not suffering, but the different elements in our life, different wounds from the past, things that Jesus wants to bring out that he wants to bring healing to. So number one, the roofers realized this. Their friend was in need. The second thing that they realized was this. The roofers realized that Jesus meets needs. Jesus meets needs. Can I say this? Jesus is still in the business of healing, of restoring, of saving, of transforming of setting people free. He is still in that business. Talking to Bishop Santos, man, we went and we're spending time having lunch together and he's filling me in about they were in Juarez, New Mexico and he was just telling me all these incredible stories of what God was doing physically in people's bodies. Jesus said this, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus has not gotten out of the business. And so the men, the roofers, they recognize my friends in need. The other thing they recognize, Jesus meets needs. Third thing about the roofers. This man had friends who knew this. What did they know? They knew that Jesus meets needs. And they realized that their friend was hurting. These men were also tenacious. Well, brother, we're praying for you. God bless you. Can I tell you about roofers? And I hope you're getting a desire to be a roofer. Can I tell you about roofers? Roofers are not the guys that go, oh, man, thank you for sharing that. We're praying for you. And then never pray. I know that I want to be a roofer, and I know that part of when, can I just say this is real practical, when people say to me, hey, Scott, will you pray for me in this area? Listen, I'm either going to grab your hands right there and pray for you, or man, the moment you walk away, I got to pray right there, because if I've told you I'm going to pray for you, I don't want that to be, I love you, God bless you. I want that to be, no, I did it. But I want want tenacious people in my life. And I want people in my life. And I want to be one of those kind of people. I want to be one of those kind of people that I'm sensitive to people's hurtings. But I know the power of God. And I want to connect these together. But listen to me. I want to do it correctly. Because if you're hurting, I want to meet you there where you are. And if you're a roofer, you're going to meet people where they are. Let me say this in love. Grow and mature as a roofer. Scott, what do you mean by that? Some of us are immature roofers because what you'll do is you got somebody in pain. They come up and they share with you, right? They trust you. That's why they're coming to you. They think you're a roofer. They come to you and say, man, I got fired from this job. I hate it. I've been there five years. And you turn around. Listen, you turn around and go, well, all things work together for the good. Can I punch you in the throat in Jesus' name? You know what? Because the word of God says this. Can I give you the word of God about mature roofers? Weep with those who weep. Rejoice with the. Do you remember the story? Lazarus is dead. Jesus is coming into the city. He's going to raise Lazarus from the dead. Baby, there's about to be a party. But when he comes up, he finds Mary and Martha, Lazarus' two sisters. And the scripture says they were weeping. And in fact, man, they were kind of shaking their fist a little bit at Jesus going, if you would have been here, our brother wouldn't be dead. And Jesus knew what was about to happen, right? He knew he was going to raise Lazarus from the dead. But Jesus didn't look at Mary and Martha and go, Cheer up. Oh, we're about to have a resurrection. Woo, woo. You know what he did? And Jesus wept. 
when you've got somebody that's hurting, roofers, hurt with them. But God, I just want to speak truth. The truth is they're hurting. And the truth is there's going to be a time to bring out those verses, those promises, but it's not right there. So if we're going to be mature roofers, my friends, we've got to meet these people exactly where they are. We've got to hurt them in the midst of their pain. So let me just finish with this last thing right here. Scott, how do I find roofers? I want to be one. But how do I find roofers for my time of hurt? Because way too many of us, what we do is during our time of hurt or pain or suffering, we rip open our chest cavity for everybody. We get on social media and we just throw out, we throw up and all of our hurt and pain, we just vomit to the world. Do you know what happens when you give things to the world when you want advice? You get worldly advice. You ask the world, you go to the world and say, I'm hurt, I'm suffering. What do I do? What do I do? They're going to they're gonna give you advice from the world. Well, dude, I'll tell you what I do. I go get drunk. Tell you what I'd do, I'd find another person. I'd find another wife, another husband. So roofers, let me tell you what the Word of God says. It says this in Proverbs 27, 9, perfume and incense bring joy to the heart and the pleasantness of a friend springs from their heartfelt advice. Romans 12, 10, be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Proverbs 12, 26 says this, the righteous, oh, some of y'all, some of y'all, some of y'all, you need to hear this today. The righteous choose their friends carefully. But the way of the wicked leads you astray. Some, during times of pain, I just want somebody to listen. Scott, I'm sharing all these things because I just need somebody to hear and to hurt and be empathetic with me. Listen, when you go through suffering, don't run to a million beggars. Run to a handful of millionaires. We vomit these things. We rip open our chest cavity. Go, I just want somebody to hear. Scott, nobody's coming, so I'm running to the world. Whoa, 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 stop, 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 stop. Don't ever run to the world. Don't, don't run to the world. Well, God, Scott, God hasn't spoken yet. He hasn't shown up yet. And maybe the reason that God has not put a person in your life, that horizontal, maybe the reason he hasn't given you that person to talk to is because he's saying, I want to do it myself. Jesus is saying, you're not going to get advice from an individual that I send you away. In this scenario, in this picture, I'm going to meet you. Because I don't always have people around me. But I promise you, I've always got God around me. And he says, I'll meet you right where you are. So yeah, in suffering, you're not supposed to do it alone. And that's why there's first a vertical. And then there's a crossbar. Because in the midst of the pain, don't do it alone. You bow your heads with me.